So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. It is first thing in the morning and I am heading over to Adler and Sons to check out some walnut. I may get a log truck load of walnut logs here. We'll have to see how it goes. But today appears to be a lot better than yesterday, at least so far. Uh, but we got over an inch of rain yesterday. I mean, at 11 o'clock in the morning, you needed your headlights on. It was just a dark, wet, sloppy, miserable day. So not a lot got done yesterday. So we're going to try to regroup today and uh, get something going on. It is 46 degrees right now. Now they're saying next week it's going to get cold, but I don't see any real cold temps. It's not going to freeze up. It looks like it's going to be like 35 during the day and in the 20s at night. I'm kind of hoping for a good cold snap, but uh, we'll see. All right, pulling into Adler and Sons. We'll see what they got here. They are uh, demoing a new grinder here. Throwing a bunch of big gnarly, it's like a tub grinder, I guess. They make mulch here, so, uh, and that big hopper, they're putting all kind of stuff in there. I think it may be jammed up a little bit right now. I think they grind it that way, it kind of shreds it, and then they'll re-grind it again into mulch. Man, that thing eats it. So after watching this thing for a little bit, it's called an Inventor 9. Uh, that would be a shredder, not a grinder. So I don't know if you can see over there, they're making a big pile. Then they will grind that, re-grind that into mulch. They got a lot of wood to feed through it. The excavator is a PC290 Komatsu. It's got that nice head on it. 360 saw on it, everything. We've got probably a 24 inch oak in there now. Alright, I'm on my way back from Adler and Sons and I learned a little bit more about that machine. I think they call it like a low speed or a slow speed shredder. And it doesn't run at near the RPMs as a big tub grinder. And the benefits to that shredder is it only uses about 12 gallons of fuel per hour compared to 50 or 60 gallons per hour with a big tub grinder and regardless whether you're using the tub grinder or the shredder it has to be reground to make into mulch uh, so there's definitely a benefit to that new machine they are just testing it out kind of demoing it but it's about 1.2 million dollars so you need to uh, produce a lot of mulch to pay for that but it's fast and even that fuel savings would uh, would add up pretty quick. Plus, I think if you hit something like a big hunk of metal, it wouldn't do near the damage with the shredder compared to a tub grinder. Those tub grinders, everything's just moving fast and uh, huge horsepower, high RPMs, and uh, you get something in there that shouldn't, it's gonna be costly. All right, just got back to the house, hooked up to the dump trailer, and uh, we're gonna go get a load of something 
that you guys have been telling me for the longest time that I should try. And that is asphalt millings. A lot of you have suggested that I try them in the past, but the problem was nobody around here that I know of had any. That's why I always buy limestone. But my buddy Wild Bill has come across quite a bit. I think he's got about 50 triaxle loads uh, that are at his place. So he is now the local kingpin of the asphalt milling cartel. All right, we're at the right place. The machine's running. Chainsaw's running. So we're here with uh, Wild Bill. And before we get on to the asphalt millings, tell them what we got here, Bill. These are pretty uh, cool. Oh, yeah, these are custom carving job. The guy's got a big home theater in a garage, so it's a big party, party kind of place, right? And these are going to go on each side of the home theater. One on each side, and the theater is great big. So a uh, guy comes here, and I'm like, oh, let me guess. You don't have any kids. He's like, no, we got kids. He says, every time I lose a kid, we get a dog. <laughs> so these are all the husky names of the dogs they have. So they have one husky now, but these are the previous huskies they had. Right. And they just got Piper. And you have a dog the same name. Yeah, we got a dog, Piper. Yep, he's Piper. And uh, he's a pup right now, but they wanted a normal adult-sized German Shepherd. Right. So we got a little German Shepherd in, in the husky collection. Uh, people were super nice. This log was gigantic. So I tried making them out of a half log for a Pacific reason. Everybody knows, you know, what's got that main split in it, right? Yeah. So I saw that main split in half. Get that totally out of the carving. And then... It's still going to maybe crack a little here or there. That's a good 36 yeah. incher at least. Yeah, yeah, it was actually over 30 exact. I had my, I had my steel, you know, 500 eye with a three foot bar and didn't make it through, Mike. Yeah. So, you know, there we are. So, yeah. anyhow, so it makes it nice. So, it's a big, big log, you know. This thing, I think this weighs around 300 pounds. But, anyhow, I did it in that reason for that crack, and I think we've talked about that before. And uh, my worker, Greg, did an excellent job on the painting. I mean, he's getting yeah. better and better. And uh, so this is a combination. This is actually like brushed on white, um, little black rattle can, airbrushed in between all the little things. And airbrushing really makes a difference. Yeah. It's really cool. And Barbie's making more it. More natural, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's right. Softer, more natural. Her, her cardinals are just beautiful. Her female cardinals are awesome. And uh, anyhow, so that's kind of how it is. A big combination of, of, of airbrushing and dry brushing. And dry brushing is just, you know, the black background and the white over top, or white yeah. and the black, however you want to do it. And the same thing with this. This one is a lot more airbrushing. And then this is floppy wheel. So see how they have the little light highlights for it? So we put yeah. all this together. Then we grab the floppy wheel, and we floppy wheel this, and it gives it some high and low spots. Right. And this gives it a little bit of depth and everything, you know. Um, so it, it was a lot of fun making these. Uh, I took my time and just picked and poked. And If you had to them. guess, how many carvings did you do? Doing oh, 23. I, I tell you what, Christmas. We're so excited about Christmas. I bet you for people's Christmas presents over the, for the year, they buy them all year for that. Well over 200 people, Christmas morning, will be opening our packages, which yeah. is, you know, our presents. And carvings for the year, well, I have no damn clue. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't. I, I couldn't even guess. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do the Christmas. Me and Barb are all excited. Like, yeah, I can't wait. And then these people send us pictures sometimes, which is really cool. Yeah. You know, uh, so, but yeah, so this is like, you know, the end of 2023. I got this. I got a little cardinal out front. Maybe we'll peek it. And uh, that's it for me. I'm heading to the Florida Keys, baby. Heading, to, <laughs> heading south for January, February. Yeah, yep. I'm taking, wow, well, January, February. March and April. Really? I got that place for four months, so we'll see what happens there. I have, I have it into May. But I'm taking my saws down. I'm going to try cutting some Florida wood down there. Uh, I think I'm going to try to set up at like a um, tree service somewhere and just see if they'll let me carve some. And, I, and I'm trying to, you know, just keep myself sharp. And then also I'm going to build a little book where I write how I do everything. So that way I have it, you know. Yeah. And uh, that, that's kind of nice. And then I can maybe hand it to someone else someday, you know. Right. But uh, so anyhow, that, that's, that's cool. the end of 2023 right here. Well, let's go load up some millings and we'll go look at that cardinal and maybe some saws. Yeah, sounds like a plan. So what do we got here, Bill? All right, we got Giant Eagles parking lot and St. Ferdinand's Church. All right. <laughs> so the, the nice thing about the millings, you know, as far as going green goes, none of this stuff went more than two and a half miles to our, our site here. Yeah. So I'm kind of blessed. I got the last little piece of commercial property on a private drive in Cranberry Township. So that's a kind so of So you had a 
stockpile the whole way yeah, up. Yeah, so I, when I was sitting in my scare loader, I was right even with them power lines sitting there like, oh boy. Now, in the middle of the night, I went over the back of uh, that hillside and down the gravel part. I can't believe it didn't flip over. I, I come the whole way back. I was looking at the sky. Oh, man. And I bumped the boom down with my right foot, and it came back down. And I think I would have flipped it totally on the roof if um, it wouldn't have been muddy. When I yeah. hit the bottom of the bank, kind of it, it kind of mushed out instead of, like, hit me harder and, and right. slapping me clean over the top. But I was on the back door, which makes you want to crap your pants, you know. Yeah. And then I went over the side of that pal uh, once in the middle of the night, too. Um, just get turned around. You know, not a lot of lights in here. So they and, were bringing and, uh, this in in the middle of the night. Yeah, exactly. So that so me and Barb work together. We have lights everywhere in here. And these guys come in, back up the ramp, dump. I push off, back up the ramps. And then, when, and you know how them damn truck guys are, right? Instead of one at a time, they'll come at six. Now, there's no way they loaded them all yeah, at the same time. But they, they always come, come together. Come, yeah, oh, yeah. So then we can split it up on both things. But it's just an excellent way of not wasting. I mean, it's hardly any fuel wasted, you know whatever and then all the little local people come around and the excavators landscapers homeowners with dump trailers all come around and right and, grab it. and, and it's 10 bucks a ton you can't beat the price you know yeah what I mean? so, can you uh load a triaxle with this 300 yeah, yeah yeah no problem so if you shoot that ramp behind you see how long it is yeah um i'm up on the ramp and they pull their trucks tight and then i have it so it leans them into me so the bed leans right into me yeah and then that lets me load them no problem i'm at their door i'm pretty much at, it's getting a little low now but i'm pretty much at their door handle right on the truck so i already pick up a half boom and i'm i'm thrown in and then this machine's look made for lifting the boom goes out away from you not yeah it's like got the vertical yeah that's correct. vertical lift boom on it yeah how many yeah. hours you got on this one? Oh, really 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 close to five thousand getting close so, to five thousand yeah, and have much trouble with it but i finally final drive this year that was the first big expense and i've had this thing for like 20 years so been pretty good with this one and i when i got it i got the updated final drives so that was something to come out yeah in crappy years there with some final drives i had the heavy duty final drives and really my final drives was fine my brakes went out like the brake kept yeah up on it and i was just back and forth and couldn't figure this out and whatever but so far so good and this this doesn't leave home much anymore it's not like we're in the excavating business like it used to be and yeah you know, kind of hang out here i move logs with it more than anything else right so gets used a little at a time but uh you know the price of a new one i'm not too excited do you hear about them electric ones they're like two hundred thousand bucks yeah i don't i don't That's get a, it yet I, i'm i'm not i'm not i'm not digging it. and how long are you going with them and then what do you got to do the guy the guy's got to sit and wait for the thing to charge and you just or or wait. just like you you had you got trucks coming in the middle of the night what if your machine's not charged oh yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that whole business is crazy. Oh, there's only this many, then there's more, or there's gonna be more, or there's less. It's you just never know what you're getting into when you're dealing with yeah. trucks. So, so asphalt, depending, you know, it's, no, this is just a top inch or so. Yeah, this is just a part. top inch or so. But mm -hmm. asphalt's made of, if memory serves me, like 95% aggregate, and then five percent. It's a petroleum base. It's like an oil. You yeah, know what I mean? Part, and yeah. and that's the binder or the glue for asphalt but i have a bunch of number three rock mm -hmm. and if this works out i just want to kind of top coat it choke it yeah you know you're getting older your ankles get a little wobbly <laughs> walking around on that number three rock <laughs> you know what it. i mean that's it but, but i'd like to do a little test see how this holds up running equipment sure. back and forth sure. on it and stuff I, and i could tell the average person and, and you know friends of mine taught me about it I, I used to buy it from other people before i started getting it yeah uh, you want it six inches thick if you can for your driveway you yeah follow me it's packs it packs really really nice too right uh, way if you, the best way to do it if you get it's a hot day and you get it and you just stomp it in with trucks or if you don't have a roller you stomp yeah it in just with keep trucks. tracking it yeah, rolling it in packing it packing and then that heat just rebinds that tar together and it it really holds well now is know? this about a ton per bucket yeah ton per bucket you got it yeah and it's then, pretty like, dense yeah, product there's not yeah it's heavy like two modified yeah because it's, there's not a lot of voids that's in it exactly it's, right so you get more coverage out of three stone the tighter aggregate, you get the less coverage you get yep it's heavier but it packs it packs so and, and you look like down here so any chunk like this size probably about that's probably like the biggest thing we get in here you smash that around it all turns into you know it's got that really most of them stones are about the size of your pinky finger now yeah and then you stomp on it for a while and then it all binds together and packs right. together but when you first put it down you got some giant so it's not like hey you know stone beautiful or anything like that you're not going to make better homes and garden out of it but for a lot of uses it's, it's really really good especially like right. we have big driveways here it's that top driveway is 2500 feet long this is probably 900 feet yeah if you had to put limestone on that you know you're gonna run everybody broke 
Oh, do you remember limestone? I remember for years I'd buy it two hundred and ten bucks a triaxle yeah, load. That's yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. Now it's six fifty. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we do good with it too, and we have triaxle guys in here all the time. Yeah, especially if you're using it to fill. Like uh, last week, there is triaxle in here, and he was uh, filling behind a retaining wall for a driveway. So it packs really nice. And yeah. They were going to go in the garage and pack it down, you know. What right. I mean? So they're running a plate tamper on and in between the trucks. So they're spreading out with the machine, plate tamping it yeah. down. And I have other guys that have rollers on their skid loaders, yeah. and that works pretty good. And then there's some solutions you can put on this stuff to get it to rebind. So, right. uh, you know, so yeah, learning all kinds of stuff about it. But uh, I di- I dislike it. It's 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 a nice and expensive thing. And if you're, you know, like live on country roads, and no matter what you do, if you're on a little private drive, you know how they dip. You know, you're yeah. driving in the same spots all the time. You got the tire mark, the hump in the middle, the next tire mark, and it starts mushing out the side. So yeah. you're going to constantly be throwing rocks in it. You know, right. Way to go. Now, do you use fabric a lot? Because I like fabric. Uh, I like fabric. You can. On flat ha- ground, on flat ground. Yeah, and you have to plan on putting at least six inches of material down. Same thing with it. You know, yeah, if you don't, you know what I mean? It rattles around too much. Yeah. You got to lock it in. You got to yep. yeah, base. You got to lock, lock it in, lock it in put yep. the bigger stuff down, mm-hmm. and then I always. Fabric number three rock and then two A limestone makes the best driveway that I ever made. But like I said, you can't go in and refresh a new driveway and think you're going to put fabric down unless you dig it all out, or you're going to be six inches too high to do it yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but from scratch, I always like fabric, and it, it, it saves you from buying stone after stone again, especially if you got wet spots. Different, you know what I mean? Like sinky spots. I think you remember that stuff. piece of property I bought years ago behind uh, Grist Mill? Oh yeah, yeah, I've been there. That's what I. That road is still, still a good road. Good. Yeah, fabric. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly that. Road. Three, four yeah. inches, and then I probably put seven inches of stone, maybe even eight in places. But and then, yeah, fabric kind of. number threes and two A limestone. Okay, and then that locks it down. Yeah, twenty five years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that housing plan I put in by Moraine, it's got five AS in it, which is out of the mill. Same thing though. Yeah, big heavy, choked it all down. And it was wide, but I put that fabric on it. But it saved me buying, getting thicker and thicker. And I didn't go up there year after year. I mean, I don't think they've hardly put any gravel on that. And that's been 15 years. Yeah. I really loaded up. I the stuff, stuff, stuff from the mill could be super big. So yeah. So you get some really big base in there. But then the next load could be like dust. So you had to kind of yeah, you had them to. all together. But it packed tight like this too. So it, it all works, you know. Well, load me up with four ton. All right. Four scoopies you get. <laughs> There's some big white pine right there. So you uh you got everything here steel husky and yeah, my, now echo my, my first echo purchase right here so as far as i know this is the smallest saw made in the world this gas saw um i really like it super lightweight i think it's around 30 cc's i gave it a little trick out um i popped a little hole in the muffler right here popped that little screen out they're famous for that screen clogging up right away I use this for making fur on my bears and making feathers. It yeah. is so light. It is nice and light. Yeah. It starts easy. A couple of my buddies have them. They run like a rape tape. Um, made in Japan. But so first. first what model is, is that? It's their fa- It's 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 hard to get to. It's a, a 2511. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to use keep this one for fur. I'm going to get another one and put a little carving bar on it. Is that it. a quarter-inch chain on there? Uh, yeah, no, it's 4.3, but it's 3.8. So it's a little bit like electric, so it kind of grabs and chokes on you a little bit. It turn, you know, don't turn yeah. I'm going to keep this for fur. I'm going to get another one with a little carving bar, put a quarter pitch on it, and you're not taking such a big bite out of it, and it'll be a real smooth detail saw. So I have one for making fur, 
one for doing faces, claws, detail yeah. work. To totally two different jobs. But you got to leave it be for what it is. So you can't expect this to be like banging through a piece of locust, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's excellent for what it what it's used for. And, my, and and the more we use it, the more I use it, the more I like it. My buddy's like, you like it? And I'm like, ah, it's okay. Uh, but now the more I use it, I love it. It's super comfortable, saves a lot of energy, not so loud, all, all those yeah. things. And it's great for bark. So. Right. Let's look at them two little steel bat or that battery. What yep. you did with that? Yep. What do we got there? This bar comes from Japan. I paid. Um, uh, can you see the? There is a wordy. There is a lettered right. Can you see that? Right yeah, down there. It's like samurai. Yes, samurai something. I did eat some samurai of it. gems or something? something. Yeah, that little bar was two hundred twenty-five bucks. There are only two people in the United States that I know of that sell them. Um, Steve Higgins. I bought this off of. Jamie Dorham's the only other person I know of. Um, Everybody that works here uses the crap out of this saw. Barb especially, Greg too. Um, great for super like. Now like, which like one is that? Work. That's this the is the two. little one. This is a little 140, and I and I test ran this before I bought it, right? Because I'm not spending you know 225 bucks on a bar. Yeah. And it's kind of like a granite. Here I'll see. So that thing doesn't shake your hand. So you don't have this piston banging you, banging it. So if you want to go up and do something like really detaily. Ah, battery's dead. What are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, can I get a battery? Yeah. Right. Battery number two. It does burn through the batteries pretty quick. And just yeah, smooth. Nice thing. You know, all day of safety glasses, earmuffs jamming on your ear. That gets you on your nerves, you know? Yeah. So you can put that down for a little while. You know, I, I run this without safety glass. I hate to say that, but it's true. And no ears. I can listen to the radio and do little detail stuff. So I'll do all these little feathers with this thing. Right. And it doesn't wear you out. It does burn through the batteries quick. The Which batteries are you running? No, this just has a, the stock battery. Yeah. But I do have that, that quick charge. That quick charge is awesome. I would not recommend yeah. not having a quick charge. Um, yeah. So, and, and I can do this with two batteries and not stop you know what i mean i don't have to wait for a charge to catch i got up. that new i think it's the 500 i see i have oh, the same one I that's same a one. that's yeah. a battery there yeah that, yeah i've got two of them same same they're thing. heavy they know. are heavy everything's I, I get it everything has its place you know yeah yeah i'm telling you so these are all new for us and, and barb carves into heat all the time and she, i'll maybe i'll grab one of her cardinals i'll show you she makes but anyhow that that works super good for me that's not for your average show but if you're a crafter or, or or making something or if, even if you're a hand carver and you want to rough out with that a little bit yeah get you it's super smooth greg uses it when we're painting so you get paint on something you sneak in there boom you're done you're then you're yeah. starting to saw now you can run it inside the building that's that those things are all let's big look deal. at them other ones yep yeah so what do we got here um so i got the older uh 200 and we got that from acme tool so they still have the older version 200 now it's a 201 i believe it's um i'm assuming it has the same sprocket so i took the sprocket off the 200 and i moved it over to the 220 mm -hmm. and i absolutely love it so this only come with 3 8 pitch so here's the sprocket. so this has flat on two sides and round okay yeah, right all right this sprocket is square the whole way around it's just square 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 all four sides this round one, since it's round, will fit over the squares on this. So I converted the three eighths to quarter pitch, yeah. And it's just so much nicer. So now you I got, got a lot of time with this after making that swap. Yes, I do. I absolutely love it compared to yeah. I don't. I haven't, yeah, didn't even put it. I'm gonna go ahead and put another quarter. This will have quarter pitch. This will have quarter pitch. I don't. I'm not a lover of three eighths. Yeah. I think why everybody got to the three eighths. Oregon quit making quarter pitch sprockets and i think that's why everybody switched over to three eighths because oregon did that okay yeah so anyhow i got this on here um super smooth, the lightweight bars i like them can you get an idea of how thin that is oh yeah it's... Uh, yeah and then it's you know and then if you look at the teeth they don't take such a big bite so it spins faster it cuts quicker because it's thinner right yeah. you know why take a big scoop when you can take a thin scoop right and it doesn't jerk you. So, you know, electric saws are famous. You go, oh, they pull you forward and jerk, you know. We're trying to carve something. You just jerk, you just wrecked your project, right? So this got a lot of power now on this 220, and it's not herky and jerky, and it's got a lightweight, so it's a little more balanced. Yeah. And, and just a, now it's a usable saw for us that we could use all the time. Right. And uh, whoever the guy is from the UK, thanks for the tip on how to get it, because I asked everybody if it would work. They said no. He said, oh, I just changed it, so I, I, I bought a whole other saw just to see if I could do it, and it works. So yeah. it's, it's, it's an awesome 
awesome setup that way. You know? Very nice. Cool. All right, so a common problem with this style saw, and this is a great saw. Doesn't vibrate much, got a lot of power for the weight ratio. It's, it's awesome that way. Famous for getting hot. So this 201 I'd put away a couple years ago, kept getting hot on me. It would boil the gas in the thing. It'd get that, that hot, right? So to get these to work nice, I finally got it figured out. Uh, you got to keep this stuff clean. Now this this is cruddy. It's an old saw I use, but I, I brought it back out of retirement because it runs out. If you clean all the fins on this side, you got to clean all the. You can't let that get cruddy. And that yeah. little bit of crud in there, you would think, you know, it get it. And I got goo all over. If you used um, canola oil, it made all your crap sticky and, and blah, yeah. blah blah blah. So I clean that with either carburetor cleaner, engine cleaner. The absolute best stuff to clean your engine with is you clean air conditioning units with it for cleaning the fins and stuff. It's like an acid, you do 50-50 with water. You clean it with that and get it really clean. Then I use that aviation tool. So it's 100 octane to get it from the airport. And then at the same time I switch to that, I switch to this, this oil. It's just a regular oil, it's not that mm -hmm. synthetic oil. The synthetic oil, doesn't smoke as much supposedly and all that kind of right. stuff. I'm assuming it burns hotter, that's why it don't smoke as much. So getting the heat away from this saw, it's so compact, it gets so hot. Yeah, that, that, that there's not enough well. there to disperse the heat. In, in that yeah, so as yeah. soon as you get it dirty, there's it. So they're excellent saws if you get a run right. And you can tell when they're running back. You pop this up and it puffs out. I could tell you I'd run a half a tank through it. And then you had to put it down, let it cool down. I grab another one because I have umpteen of the same saws. Yeah. Right? So I have probably, I think I have four of these 201s. The 194s and all that, I think six, eight of those, you know what I mean? So I got them all running a lot better. You still try not to get super nuts and like over rev them and get all nuts. The other thing I did with this one, I popped a little hole in the muffler right there too. Let it breathe a little bit better. Yeah. Let's get a little of that out of there. I don't like to do the uh, timing advance on these because that adds more fuel and makes it hotter. So right. just cut the air out, try to keep it cool. And so this is a saw I hadn't used for a couple years. Switch to that fuel and everything's working way better on you all You got some of them. time on that, so I yeah, can tell yeah, by yeah, looking. Yeah, yeah, and we're not like the person puts a, uh, you'd be on these for 10 hours, you know, especially if you're making the same thing over again, you grab yeah. the same one. That's why we have so much of the same of the same one. You run that one, throw it down, grab another one, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then obviously you can steal parts off of them. Right. So anyhow, those are our little top secret tricks for the day. What do you got on that uh, DeWalt drill over there? Ah, so this is something most people don't see. So this is called a floppy wheel. So say we burn and scrub all this, gets all these fuzzies off. Kind of run them all in. Just in all the nooks and crannies. Oh yeah. So it's cheap. Just put a little PVC pipe in there. It's actually my one of my kids set this up. But this this pipe should spin in here. It doesn't. Yeah. So my hand gets a little bit warm. Yeah. And then you know I go to Harbor Freight and get the cheap six inch uh, pieces of discs uh, in there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They're not even discs. They're uh, the belts and you oh, cut okay, the belts. Yeah. Yep, and it just pretty much on a dowel rod, you know, a double knotted so it don't come off there, here, and a little nut up here. And, and this nut shouldn't have been so tight, and it would spin in your hand. Yeah, right. But it's a lot cheaper. The, the, the you have other ones you buy, they don't last as long. And this is funky to run at first. It is so fast. Like you got a big carving, you get in there, and you, it, and you can get in the cracks. No, look, not in the crack. Yeah. You can use the back of it and the front, and I do like so many one way and then so many the other way see how i flip yep. them there get the backs on that we can use the front end and the back super inexpensive super cool and the longer shaft rod use it way more we have some shorter ones we don't use this is one everybody uses with a longer arm yeah just keep your hands loose so another little top secret chick for people doing so like say you had a log and you're trying to clean it up and make something out of it yeah it gets in all the cracks crevices clean all that guck off around the bark you know yeah even guys that do live edge stuff and all that yeah exactly so, you know, yeah perfect that's a great example yeah, yeah great example yeah cleans all that stuff up so yeah that's that's a new tricks of the year right here folks well cool bill well, I appreciate it, man. I am going to go home and uh, try out my asphalt millings. <laughs> well, I'm going to need some more. Mike. Yeah, I, I will. Agree, I think, yeah. yeah I'll little, get you when you get back time. from Florida. I'd say it. Well, I ain't here. I'll leave you the keys. You can load yourself. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, man. Thanks. All right, brother. Take care.
All right, so my uh, first impressions of the asphalt millings, I like it. Uh, now, it doesn't go real far. I talked about that earlier, or Bill and I did. You know, it's like uh, two a limestone or three-quarter inch down to dust. There's not a lot of voids in a pile. Uh, so volume-wise, you don't get a whole bunch, but it seems to compact pretty well. And uh, it may be what I'm looking for. I'll have to decide. What I'm doing here is kind of a test. As you know, I built that road from the house all the way back to the clearing. Well, at some point, I need to put something down on it. And what I'm thinking, you know, you're still going to need a base rock. So I could put like number three limestone down, but I may be able to use like these asphalt millings to top it. So this area here is just kind of a test. I'm in and out of here with the trailer, firewood baskets, thing like things like that. So we'll see how it holds up over winter. But I tell you what, if you had a smooth drum roller, I think that would be the ticket. I just tracked this in with the machine, but uh, you can see it tightens up really well. Fills in all the little voids on the base rock. Kind of like a uh, poor man's asphalt right here. Put this down in the summertime, smooth drum roller, be in business. But anyway, I think that's it for today's video. Before I forget though, if you are a subscriber to our channel, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. I've been seeing comments from people that uh, they are no longer subscribers, so they had to do it again. I don't know why YouTube does that, but every once in a while, you just kind of get bumped. So if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please do. Hit the like button, all that stuff. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've ever used this stuff before. And uh, I think that's about it. We'll catch you on the next one.